ladies and gentlemen, it is 4 p.m. on Tuesday, the 12th of January 2021. That means it is time for January's epic product launch, live from Mission Control in Northwijk by the sea. We have selected several epic members who each have an important development to announce to the rest of the world. Those companies are Aspericon, Duma Optronics, Mircens and Iridian. Let's open up the Zoom room and get started. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Epic Product Release. First of all, Happy New Year for everyone. I really hope that 2021 will be better than 2019. It was a really a fantastic 2020 that we all live with the online events of Epic and we will continue. I hope this year we'll all get vaccinated, we'll start traveling again, but don't forget the online world that we discovered in 2020 is here to stay. We really realized we can do a lot of things from the comfort of our own desk while we are at home with our families. Epic grew a lot in 2020. We actually have now 650 members, all of them constantly looking for cooperations and collaborations. But today, today we have the Epic product release. This is for us the news show, the show in which our members tell us new things that happen to their companies. Today we are going to have four fantastic presentations. We'll start with the new fiber collimation for the UV range of Aspherico. Aspherico is developing a whole optics platform for the UV range. Afterwards, we go to Israel and talk to Duma Optronics about the large aperture electronic auto collimator. Afterwards, stay for this one. Mircens is going to present unprecedented 10 to 17 micrometers QCL wavelengths. That has never been achieved before. This is a finalist for the Prism Awards. And we'll finish with a very interesting hot topic, optical fi filters for PCR testing. Who, have, who hasn't heard about PCR in the last six months? Thank you, Iridian, for giving this presentation to us. These are all new things that we want to showcase. So let's get started and let's go to the capital of optics in Europe. Let's go to Jena. And actually, Sabrina is based in Leipzig, but she's working from home. Aspericon is based in the capital of optics in Jena, and she's going to talk to us about half fiber collimation for the UV range, a company that I actually personally love, Aspericon. Thank you very much for kicking off the new show today. The floor and the attention of everyone goes to Sabrina, goes to Aspericon. All right. Thank you, Jose. Thank you for this kind introduction. And uh, thank you again for giving us this platform to introduce to all of you our latest product releases. And as already mentioned, this time it is about a smart fiber collimation. Um, our latest product release is part of our beam tuning orbit, very well known for our uh, unique beam expanders, for our different beam shaping optics and elements, and also for the complementary elements in this beam tuning orbit, um, like our mounted A-spheres, A-cylinders, or um, exocons. Um, but the new star in this orbit is our fiber collimator, the aspherical, and the very, very new star is our fiber collimator for the UV range that is designed for 355 um, nanometers, and it now fills the gap so that we can provide to our customers the whole range from the UV light all the way to the near infrared for fiber collimation. Um, we also improved all fiber collimators that we had in our portfolio and we made them so much more easier to handle. We improved them in the way that they can be adjusted. And of course, they all follow this uh, known plug and play solution for the beam tuning elements from Aspherocon. Um, it is a very handy, very small, very um, um, nice little element that can not only be used for fiber collimation, but it can also be used for fiber coupling. And it has a 30 millimeter outer diameter, so it's easy for you to handle this element in your lab compared to other fiber collimators that are so tiny and small. And um, it also is one of the few elements in the whole um, optical market that can be adjusted in a wavelength range. So this is outstanding and unique. Um, the way you adjust this is um, super easy. You just need an Allen key, find the perfect way for your wavelength or for the collimated um, beam of your, of, your, um, of your fiber. 
and um, then you just put it in into your whole system. And this saves a lot of time in the daily lab routine. And if you want to learn more how you can adjust uh, the aspherical, I invite you to go to aspherical's YouTube channel, watch the beam tuning videos, and especially in this case, go to episode eight. And of course, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any new product releases or video releases for the beam tuning elements from aspherical. The aspherical's are all um, diffraction limited um, elements. So don't worry about the performance. The outcoming wavefront is always perfect. Um, they can cover NAs from 0 point, um, up to 0 0.275. And due to the chosen focal length of this element, the output beam diameter is already in a fairly big um, uh, range. So compared to other um, fiber collimators, um, this might save you a lot of space because you might not need any additional beam expanders in your setup. You can use the, the beam as it comes out of the fiber collimator right away. And as I said, with our new star for the 355 nanometers, we can now um, complete the whole range from the UV all the way to the near infrared. And of course, it follows the plug and play um, solution from, from all the beam tuning elements for, from Aspherical. So you can easily combine it with our beam expanders, with the um, beam shaping elements, all the complementary elements. So all the beam tuning elements um, gives you the, the option to have uh, the optical setup ready for your application. So I invite you to go online, start shopping. What are you waiting for? Get your beam tuning set today. And that's it. Thank you for your attention. And I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Sabrina, for starting this first ep epic product release of 2021. And you are already an expert of those meetings. <laughs> you know what's coming, right? The epic yes. question. What can 650 epic members do for Aspherikon? And what can Aspherikon do for them? Um, of course, as you already mentioned, that we um, have enlarged especially our portfolio in the UV range. So um, just go online, find our webshop and see what we can offer you in this special range that is um, way more needed. It's also um, very often uh, suitable for high power lasers. So just go there, check what we have, what we can offer you. And on the other hand, we are always, always, always excited to learn what uh, what is the need of the market? What do others need? What, uh, what, what do you want? What do you expect from your fiber collimator? Just let us know and we will see if we can help you, if we can find a solution for you, because we are not only doing um, um, the standard solutions, we can also do customized solutions for all the Epic members. Sabrina, you are you are a YouTube sensation. I, I have to say that I love I love the YouTube channel. I watch all the videos. And one thing that I get from these videos is the idea of a spherical into pushing this plug and play, into pushing this modular optical mm -hmm. design. What is the reason behind and what kind of impact have you received from the, from the, from the customers that you address with this plug and play process? Mm -hmm. I mean, the main reason are our customers because we want to make it easy for them. Uh, remember when you go when you went to a lab as a student and then you had to um, collimate into a fiber or couple out of a fiber and find the perfect position of your lens. It can take you hours before you have all the light in the fiber. So we want to make the lab life easy and not only the lab life, also the daily routine of um, all our customers. So you just plug it in, maybe find um, another position by just using this little Allen key, but then you're done. That's maybe five to 10 minutes in the worst case, but compared to a few hours of installing and finding the right position, we just want to make the lab life easier and want to make the optical life easier for our customers. That's the main reason. I love the slogan, shape it till you make it. It's something that you mentioned constantly <laughs> in your videos. When it comes to UV wavelength, uh, one thing, one market that actually grew quite a lot in 2020 was uh, a not great year in general, but on the UV laser, we saw, we saw an increase on the market. And uh, what kind of companies, don't tell me the name, but the profile of companies, you think they should be talking to us very con. Are we talking about less manufacturers, system integrators, the users of those systems? What are the ideal customers that us wants to get in touch with? Mm -hmm. um, I would say the system integrators and uh, also the, the laser manufacturer. 
um, and the um, material processing um, companies, the ones who, who, are, who are finally um, using those um, elements are as well welcome to talk to us. But I think the main key is um, with the system integrators. One more thing is very important for us to, to position as Fericon. There's many companies developing optics, of course. One thing that I, I went to visit you, we actually organized even an event on freeform mm -hmm. optics at, uh, at Aspherikon in Jena. Uh, one thing that always uh, made a difference uh, with Aspherikon was the metrology, right? You mm -hmm. always wanted to guarantee certain specifications. Could you tell us a bit more about this? <laughs> If you really want to see what we can do about metrology for the customers, I invite all the customers first to go to our website because uh, as of right now, we can't um, offer visit visits. But as soon as this whole thing is over, as you said, and we can all travel, I invite you to uh, visit us because some people are really... Um, impressed of how, how much metrology we have. It's like stunning for them to go through our production line and see that there are all these interferometers, um, non-contact, contact, that there's, a, there's like a whole zoo of metrology elements that I, I can't name them all right now because we have so many. So we are um, well equipped to, to measure your design of the future already right now. Sabrina, thank you very much. As Fericon is an example in the terms of innovation, in terms of high quality you. optics. You have been thank one of you. the drivers of the momentum of optics at Epic. So thank you once again. And I can't wait. I can't wait to go back to Jena and pay you a visit. And also would like to tell everyone, if you want to see a fantastic manufacturing center for optics in Europe, you have to go to Jena and visit as Fericon. Sabrina, once again, thank, thank you. you very much. And now we go from Germany to Israel, a country that I personally love and I can't wait to go there again. I would like to, to give the floor to, do, to Oren Aharon. We go to Israel because he has a new product for the large aperture electronic auto collimation. This auto collimator is going to set a difference like everything that Duma Optronics does in the optics industry. Aaron, thank you very much for being with us in this fantastic first ever epic product release of 2021, the floor and the attention of everyone goes to Israel and goes to the large aperture electronic autocollimator LA100. Aaron, I think we have you muted. Oren, yes. Yeah, a moment. You hear me? Loud and clear. Ah. Let's share yeah, the really screen great. and see about the, the auto collimator from Duma Optronics. Hi. Hi, everybody. Here we are from Israel. Uh, we still can't see your screen. No, you see? Not yet. Not Almost yet. Almost here. Let's, let's go okay. to the bottom. Bottom of the Zoom window, yes, we are here. If we go now to the presentation, fantastic, the floor is yours. Ah, thank you, thank you. Well, greetings from Israel, greetings for the new year. And uh, as everybody knows, uh, like a significant part of the Israeli uh, people are uh, already inoculated or uh, vaccinated. And so, no need for masks to everybody. <laughs> what uh, Duma Optronic is a company, we are located in Israel, and what we do, we do testing instrumentation for the optronics uh, field. Today, we are going to introduce the electronic autocollimator LA100 and a related uh, product, autofocus electronic autocollimator, which is very much related to that. And uh, I hope you'll find interested interest these products to be very interesting. At Duma, we have several product lines. We have beam analysis product line. We have optical beam positioning product line. Product line, alignment measurement system uh, for mechanical and optical, electronic autocollimator, and high power laser beam profile for the high-powered laser industry. 
Uh, if you'll go to our website, you'll find all these products that I was talking about with this, uh, under this uh, position sensing, alignment sensing, beam profiling, and high power. And what we are uh, at the end of development right now, it's uh, the Flex MTF for measuring uh, uh, lenses in mass production. We'll start a little bit with the theory. An autocollimator, basically, it's a 100-year-old technology, and it's based on illuminating LED, a reticle, a beam splitter. When the illumination of the LED is activated, then the reticle is projected through an objective lens to infinity. If this uh, projected cross is back reflected, it's recollected by the same objective lens. Here is the objective lens. And then displayed on a detector, which calculates by, by uh, which calculates the angle from the displacement across the detector surface. So that's, on a nutshell, the basic of a 100-year technology the electronic autocollimator. In our new product, what we added, we added, we added some new, new feature for this technology. We added a capability of having an illuminator at different wavelengths, RGB and IR, and the user can choose which wavelengths he wants. We added the large aperture, we have now a very large aperture, which is very, very rare, around a 100 millimeter large aperture. We have a motorized focusing system, which moves back and forth the objective lens to focus at various instances. And we have a very special CCD sensor, which is actually a position sensor and also a beam profiling system, like for uh, this, Using this technology, we can measure like the collimation uh, of the products offered by Sabrina. We can tell her exactly how collimated and what's the divergence angle with the same system. Here we see like the, a picture of the uh, AUC LA100, which is a large aperture autocollimator, it has a 100 millimeter input. It has a resolution down, very high resolution of 0.01 arc second, which is 0.05 micro radian. It's unbelievable. We have, uh, this system also has the built-in laser pointer showing where the system is looking at. And also it has a, this area, adjustment mechanical pan and feed. Uh, and the big difference between a regular autocollimator and our autocollimator is that it has a hybrid technology. Hybrid technology meaning that we, this is not only an autocollimator, but also a, a laser beam analysis system for testing collimation, divergence, position, adjustment, things like that. The related device, which is the autofocusing electronic autocollimator, it's actually a regular autocollimator, which has this hybrid technology built in for measuring uh, alignment and laser collimation and direction and the other nice thing that I was talking about. But it also has like a motorized function where you can adjust the focusing point of the lens exactly from the computer. Like you can tell the system, I want you to focus at a distance of 20 centimeters. 
the system will find 20 centimeter and will focus, or five meters, or whatever. So this gives us a very uh, high-tech type of photocollimator with a autofocusing function. And what's special about this focusing function that as you move the focusing point, the line of sight doesn't deviate more than 2.5 seconds along the whole travel. It has built-in uh, pr uh, laser project uh, projection for direction, and it's excellent for interalignment of mechanical and optical system, and also interalignment of mechanical and laser system. And you can change the wavelength you want the system to operate at, so you actually can can change uh, can check collimation of three feet uh, three five five nanometer up to fourteen hundred nanometer and get a very very accurate result. Here we have uh, like uh, the function of uh, laser profiling. We have in a, an array of vexel lasers. And we can tell each vexel laser what's the divergence, what's the relative position between the, re, uh, uh, the, the vexel laser, and what's the power of each laser. And the, here we have like a 3D, 3D demonstration of the same vexel laser that we just tested. That's the autocollimator function where you see like. Here you see the back reflected cross, and you see the angle in uh, in milli radian. You see you have, we have 0 0.133354 milli radian, uh, which is uh, three, which is fraction of second resolution. Well, I hope I was fast enough, and I do leave some. Uh, room for uh, Q&A. You were fantastic, Oren. Thank you very Thank much. You. I advise everyone to look at the website www.dumaoptronics.com and now let's have a little bit of a discussion. And the first question, of course, you're an expert here. You know what's coming. The epic question. Ah, what can yeah. 150 members do for Duma Optronics and what can Oren Aharon do for 650 members? Since you coordinated a very nice uh, uh, people who present uh, like their new technology, for example, I uh, will pick naturally a Sericon, Sabrina. We can test the amount of collimation of her products to within micro radian accuracy. And actually we can allow her to do adjustment in real time, to adjust collimation in real time and also measure the amount of divergence, divergence after the sink was collimated. But beside that, we can do alignment of optical system to mechanical system. We can do beam profiling for laser system. We can do camera alignment for using that like in auto driving, we can adjust the camera to certain distances and by the way, we have some very, very large customers in there, in this area, big companies, not large, but very big companies that are, uh, we are working with it for this type of application. We can do laser alignment and uh, high power beam profiling to characterize the high power up to six kilowatts. In these kind of meetings, uh, Oren, I always like to invite the press. They have a completely different view of the one that they normally have. Yeah. Oliver Dreisi Hacker is the is the editor in chief of Photonics Views of, of, of Optic and Photonic, uh, Willie VCH. Uh, Wiley, uh, Oliver, what's on your mind? Um, well, I just wanted to add a remark because uh, Oren and uh, his colleague from PLX have written a technical article which is uh, yes. going to appear uh, in Photonics Views One 2021 in February. So um, 
as you're all uh, EPIC members here, you're going to have uh, this issue in your mailbox in February. Uh, for those of you who are uh, at the home office and still doing, uh, still work from home, uh, just contact us by any means and uh, we're going to send it to you. Thank you very much, Oliver. You have been a partner of, sorry, Ari. Yeah, sorry. Thank you very much, Oliver. You have been a partner of Epic, a media partner of Epic for, for almost as long as I have been here. And we love the support that you keep giving us. Thank you very much for this. And I would like to, to ask you, Oren, one thing. One thing that we keep discussing is about the volume testing, volume testing of optics. Today you had a, a beautiful slide, which I'm going to bring back to the, to the attention of the, of, the, of the audience, which is this one over here. And you were talking about the use of motorized distance focusing techniques. Uh, what is the next step? Are you looking for large volume testing of optics? And how can you adapt this setup to, to go to larger volumes? Our customers today, uh, which are, uh, which are uh, like going for a uh, self-driving type of solution, they need to adjust the camera in production to certain distance. We, for them, they built the whole machine. We supplied all, only this one. And according to the distance they want to adjust their camera to, we project to them an image which represents what will camera will see at this exact system. Like in a car, if you want to see in the near periphery of about six or seven meter, this system will do exactly that will project the target for them to adjust it for six to seven meters. If they want to adjust it to a hundred meters, the system will do the same. We project the distance of a hundred meters and there are some companies that are doing automatic machines based on our technology. Uh, one more thing, uh, we talk constantly about RGB. You mentioned at some point other wavelengths, and you were very interested in talking to Aspherikon, presenting the UV wavelengths today. Could you tell us about the different wavelength range? And stay tuned, because the next presentation is going to talk about 10 to 17 microns. So what wavelength ranges are the ones of focus of Duma Optronics, and what ones, which ones are the, the ones for the present and future? By software, we adjust it, this autocollimator to several wavelengths. Like if you work at 355, we need to move up and down the optical element to match the 355. But this detector of ours is also sensitive to 1400 nanometer. So between 355 to 1400 nanometer, we can test everything, collimation, direction, uh, distance, because everything is calibrated into the software. All right, so let's go now to one other person that we have in the room, uh, all the way from Genoptic. We have my friend Nico Bombach. Nico, th Nico, thank you very much for joining the meeting today. We already had two presentations, one from Aspherikon talking about the UV, and then one from, from Duma Optronics talking about the auto collimator. Uh, Nico, can you, uh, what's on your mind after these two presentations, and what kind of room for cooperation do you foresee? Um, I'm personally more into the to the first presentation, honestly, because we are also always looking into kind of beam expanders, collimators, and all the stuff. So it's very nice to see the approach of Aspherikon using the S spheres, as we did not do this in the past. So we are basically using spherical lenses, more or less. So we are not targeting the same market, even though it's kind of like similar products. We are not targeting the same market as our products are. I don't want to call less sophisticated, but um, less focused on the wavefront as uh, Sabrina showed right now. So I'm, I'm a little impressed on how good they managed to have a, a system which is for a lab use perfectly matched that they can arrange every single optical element after each other without very hard aligning. So this is, in my opinion, a very good approach 
for all the people working in optics um, who are who know the pain of aligning optical elements to each other. So uh, Serena, is, what do you say to a compliment like that coming from Genoptic? <laughs> uh, first of all, thank you. Um, and then I'm really looking forward to receive your order. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all of you stay tuned because what's going to happen now is, is actually very, very, very unique. New Epic member Mircens is presenting something that makes me particularly excited. Mircens have actually for many years been at the forefront of developing quantum cascade lasers and been recognized in the defense and medical sector for enabling very high powers. But today, today they are going for unprecedented wavelengths, 10 to 17 micrometers. Actually, we are talking now to one of the nominees for the PRISM Awards at Photonics West, Mircens, new member of EPIC, Roland Taysier. Thank you very much for choosing our platforms, for communicating such a huge achievement for the mid infrared community. The floor and the attention of everyone, now more than ever, goes to Mircens. 10 to 17 micrometers. This is crazy. The floor is yours. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. C can you see my, my screen? Is it crystal okay? clear. Okay, very good. Thank you very much for this uh, introduction. So uh, it is my pleasure today to present to you uh, this new uh, QCR Uh, project which extends the available uh, wavelength range uh, to very long wavelengths. Um, okay, so uh, first a brief introduction about uh, Mircense, which is a French company, French manufacturer of quantum cascade lasers. It was founded in 2015. Uh, today uh, it has about 20 employees and most of them are highly skilled uh, persons uh, with PhDs. Um, and the core activity is to manufacture quantum cascade lasers emitting in the infrared and also gas sensors based on these quantum cascade, cascade lasers. So the main products are power lasers for uh, infrared countermeasures, uh, also a single mode laser for application in spectroscopy and QCL based Uh, modules and sensors uh, for gas sensing and gas analysis. So today, the new product that I wanted to, to present to you is Unimir. Unimir is a single mode uh, laser working at room temperature and emitting in a very long wavelength range in the infrared. Uh, so it is built into an HHL Uh, package with a collimated beam. And you see that you can obtain from these lasers, you have on the bottom, the output characteristics of the lasers uh, in CW operation around room temperature for the temperature of the ship. Uh, milliwatts, typically five milliwatts of CW power uh, accessible with these uh, lasers. You have the spectra and you can see that you can tune the emission wavelengths by changing the QCL chip temperature, which is controlled inside the package by the uh, thermoelectric uh, cooler. And the tuning can also be obtained by shifting the current, uh, the driving current of the QCL chip, and you can finely tune uh, uh, the wavelengths into uh, typically for two uh, wave numbers uh, range. So this is an exclusive novel technology. Uh, it is based on different material system compared to the standard QCL technology, which is based on indium phosphide uh, family of materials. Uh, this is a technology that has been developed uh, at University of Montpellier and CNRS uh, for many years, and which is now licensed and transferred to Mircens. Uh, we have the production facilities Uh, uh, accessible for the production of these lasers with molecular beam epitaxy, clean room manufacturing, and also laser packaging and assembly. And the control of all these uh, uh, competencies uh, allows to pro propose off-the-shelf wavelengths and lasers, but also custom developments for uh, custom wavelengths and also uh, the capability of large series uh, 
uh, of uh, fabrication. So these lasers are the main application of these lasers is uh, molecular spectroscopy, infrared molecular spectroscopy for gas sensing. So you know that many of the molecules have uh, uh, fingerprint absorption lines in the mid infrared. And if you have the correct wavelengths for your laser, you can do ab selective absorption and detect very sense with a very high sensitivity and very high selectivity, uh, the molecule. Uh, the, the standard wavelength range for uh, QC lasers is four to 10 microns. And with this new product range, we can address the larger uh, uh, frontier, the, the long wavelength frontier of the mid infrared and address new molecules. And these find applications in uh, industry, oil and gas, nuclear, the, any process control, env environmental monitoring for healthcare, for security, uh, and so on. And some example of uh, available wavelengths are listed here. One large class of uh, target molecules are what we call BTEX, be uh, aromatics molecules, benzene, ethylbenzene, toluene, xylens, that have absorption, absorption lines between 13 and 15 micron. Uh, also, uh, um, methyl iodide or uh, uranium fluoride are, are products or large molecules that are of very uh, strong interest for uh, the nuclear industry and that you can target with these lasers. This is an example of what we can do with such a tunable uh, single mode laser. This is a, a publication that has been done with collaborators in Finland, uh, Gazera and University of Helsinki. And they demonstrated with our laser, a photoacoustic uh, detection of benzene at a wavelength of 14.9 uh, micron and uh, demonstrated sub PPB uh, limit of detection. You can see the linearity, which is very good as a function of the concentration, and also uh, the stability of the, the measurements. Uh, this is the Allen deviation plot of the, the signal, of the measured signal, showing that up to uh, five minutes, you still have uh, increased uh, detection which means that the laser is very stable and all the system is very stable and allows to detect a very, very low concentration of gases. So this is a typical example, but obviously you can address many, many different molecules, many gases uh, all around this uh, range uh, between 10 and uh, 17 micron for which we can provide CW lasers uh, of this type. Thank you very much for your attention and waiting for your questions. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm really, really, really impressed. <laughs> it is difficult to impress me because I listen to a thousand presentations a year, but this is this is out of this world. We've been we've been waiting for for having Europe really leading the QCL market, and I can tell you over the last five years we are with no question about this, and now we're even targeting longer wavelengths than ever. It is Roland, your first ever EPIC meeting. Welcome to EPIC. Uh, you're gonna get your first ever EPIC question. What can 650 EPIC members do for Mircens and what can you do for them? Well, obviously what we can do for them is provide a new, uh, a new range of lasers or laser sources for your applications, for uh, your developments, for your uh, analysis or whatever you can imagine. Uh, and then you can buy them from Mircens now. Uh, also, what can they do for us? They can uh, propose applications, propose uh, systems in which we can in integrate these lasers and access new markets uh, with these lasers. For me, when I, when I see uh, your presentation, and I'm gonna go back to, to the top slide that you showed, uh, I got goosebumps with this slide. You told us about uh, single mode and you told about tunability.
TDLS is, uh, is really the, the market for, for, for the quantum cascade lasers. Uh, could you tell us a bit about the tuning range and why did you design such tuning range for, for which applications? Well, typically when you, for, for gas sensing application, you need to tune the laser across the absorption line of, of the molecule. And typical tuning, uh, which is required for that is typically uh, half a, a wave number, uh, 0.5 uh, inverse centimeter. So uh, this is what you need to, to scan the absorption line, but also you need to have a, a slightly larger tuning in order to uh, to, to, to be sure to address the exact wave, uh, wavelength or wave number that you want. So we have a, a coarse tuning, which is the temperature of the laser, and then you can adjust uh, to, 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 to get close to your absorption line. And then for the measurement, you, 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 you can do modulation of the, of the laser current in order to scan the, 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 the laser, uh, uh, sorry, the, the gas absorption line. So these are typical numbers that are used for gas spectroscopy using laser. One thing that I can't wait to, to, to do is as soon as I can travel again, uh, I'm going to, to go to see your MB growth and also to, to your packaging facilities, the share, the share manufacturing that the missions have access to. Uh, but I would like to ask you about packaging. Uh, you are actually talking very proudly about having a device at the meet that works at room temperature. Uh, is there any, any addition to this when it comes to temperature control? Is that part of the package? Are you working towards having a temperature control laser diode or you don't actually need that? Uh, actually, we, we do have a temperature control inside the HHL package. We have a, a Peltier uh, controller. And then obviously you need to put this header on the heat sink in order to evacuate the heat generated by the laser and the temperature controller. Uh, so we can also propose um, um, complete systems with uh, the, uh, the heat sink and the, in a box. And you, you, you can also have uh, the extra elements that allows to control uh, everything uh, quasi uh, plug and play. I can understand why the whole industry is, is looking at medicines right now. We've been looking for this wavelength range for many different applications. I think the nuclear market is, is desperate for this. I'm going to go to one company who is a current partner and, and friend with Mirisense. I'm going to go to Alp Laser. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Oliver, for being with us uh, today. I would like to ask you, uh, you've seen the presentation, Oliver Landry from Alp Laser. You've seen what these people can do. Uh, what kind of opportunities do you see for the market that is desperate for these wavelengths? And what kind of mm -hmm. room for cooperation do you see? Oh, uh, in terms of room for cooperation, we're, we're always open. As you say, uh, you, European companies uh, in general are, are getting in the lead on the QCL and ICL and, and generally on the mid-IR mid market. Of course, we do have some competitions, uh, some of them are from the US, less from Japan than we had 10 years ago. Uh, we, we are cooperating with Mercedes in different projects uh, already, and we're always open for more. In terms of applications, I think I think you, you mentioned the nuclear industry, and that's uh, probably the most important point. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, aromatics and hydrocarbons. Uh, there's a lot of wavelengths um, that are uh, very interesting. Now, uh, standard. If I can have a question of my own, in standard uh, Alinas QCLs, uh, we've had continuous wave lasers up to 12.3 microns for a long time. Uh, and we also had some lasers up to 14 microns. So, so that, that was something that existed, but there was this forbidden zone between 15 and 16 microns where it's just impossible to do anything with, Alina, uh, with Alinas that you've, man, uh, you've been able to crack that zone uh, with the uh, indium antimony. Uh, so, but is there an equivalent forbidden zone with your laser? Is there a limit to what you can do or is there, are there some wavelengths that are just inaccessible? Um. Yes, uh, th there are uh, forbidden zones, but uh, because of the material properties, they are shifted to much longer wavelengths. And typically the, the forbidden zone uh, begins above 20 microns. Okay, and so you can, you can achieve up to 20 microns with room temperature lasers. Yeah. That's impressive. At, at, at the moment we, we have, uh, I mean, uh, for, for CW operation, 
uh, up to 20 micron, but not exactly at room temperature, which is uh, something like a minus 20. Uh, but there, there is no limitation, uh, I mean, intrinsic limitation to, 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 to go up to 20 micron. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Impressive, impressive work. Roland, uh, one, one final question for you from my side. We've been talking to Mircens and for many years, you position as a company that, that manufactures semiconductor lasers, but also would like to go a bit higher in the supply chain and manufacture also instrumentation to, to be able to, to have the, the final users experiment something that didn't exist before. Uh, what companies do you think should get in touch with Mircens for this wavelength range? And how can Epic bring them in touch with you? Are we looking at end users or do you think we should talk to the system integrators first and see how they can put an instrument? Um, maybe, Hello, uh, Mathieu Carras, yeah, the uh, CEO of Mircens. Great Hello. to have you here, Mathieu. Hello. Uh, yeah, just maybe uh, uh, answering about this question. Uh, as you mentioned, we are both looking for integrators for the lasers themselves that we just bring to the market with this new wavelength range. So basically new applications like labs, but of course system integrators to be able to, br to, to bridge the gap to the market. Uh, and in parallel to that, we also do integrate these lasers in, an, in our own uh, gas sensors for, for uh, and then we can talk to, uh, to integrators of gas sensors. So everything that is related to this wavelength range we are, is of interest for us at any position in the value chain from the laser integration up to the system integration of the gas sensors. This duality that you have achieved on one hand making semiconductor lasers, on the other having instrumentation is a recipe for success. And once again, congratulations. We needed this and you guys are setting up the stepping stone to have Europe leading the QCL market. Thank you very much for existing. Thank I'm gonna continue with the program, but I have goosebumps with Mirsons today. I'm gonna continue. I think 2020 was a year that we'll all remember because of COVID. But it was a year that we all remember because of three letters as well, PCR. And when it comes to PCR testing, we always want optical filters. Optical filtering is the secret of PCR. And with this, I have Iridian Spectral Technologies to talk to us about a new product, optical filters especially designed for PCR testing. Hong Bai Lao, thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. Thank you for being the last presenter of this fantastic new show, which is the Epic Product Release. The floor and the attention of everyone goes to the optical filters for PCR testing of Iridian. Okay. Hello, everybody. Can you see uh, the screen uh, well? Crystal clear and we can hear you loud and clear. The floor is yours. Yeah. Okay, so I uh, just uh, want to uh, introduce a little bit uh, about uh, Iridian uh, and the uh, our products. Uh, so uh, Iridian is a Canadian company established in 1998. Uh, so with the uh, manufacturing facility uh, in Ottawa, the capital of uh, Canada. Uh, so we have about 160 people uh, working in this uh, uh, manufacturing facility. Uh, we are I ISO 9001 uh, 2015 certified uh, since uh, 2016. Uh, we uh, Iridian uh, de design and manufactures uh, thin film uh, dielectric uh, optical filters and coatings with, with the all the uh, energetic the sputtering coating technologies. Uh, currently, we have uh, 19 coating uh, chambers. Uh, we do it, basically, uh, we have our own uh, custom design and uh, uh, optical monitoring control software uh, developed uh, by our company. Uh, we do all this uh, coating uh, in-house uh, in, uh, in, in Ottawa. Uh, we, we, we make uh, filters from uh, uh, wavelength from uh, 300 nanometer up to uh, uh, 10 micron. Uh, so uh, in, in two, two, three months, uh, we, we can do also the wavelength up to uh, 15 microns. Uh, so that's the, uh, the, the uh, long wave IR uh, range. Uh, we do a lot of uh, custom solution uh, design for, uh, for the filters for a single band pass filter, multi band pass filter. 
uh, for filter size from as small as one millimeter square uh, up to 150 millimeter diameter. Uh, we uh, also uh, make uh, filters for uh, different markets, uh, including uh, te for telecommunication, data comm, uh, biomedical, uh, medical uh, markets, uh, Raman spectroscopy, uh, and also some space uh, application for uh, the, the multi zone filters, uh, and also LIDAR. Uh, uh, systems for uh, with the the lighter uh, 905 nanometer uh, filters. So I would like to uh, introduce uh, the uh, our our feature uh, newer products uh, uh, the the PCR filters for PCR testing today. Uh, so typically, uh, a PCR systems uh, use uh, the uh, fluorescence-based uh, PCR chemistry uh, to uh, to provide it, uh, the quantitative uh, detection of the nuclear acid uh, sequences, uh, just like the uh, the COVID nineteen uh, 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 virus uh, detection. Uh, so typically, uh, they uh, use uh, multi channels in each uh, instruments. Uh, from uh, two channels up to uh, six channels. Uh, so Iridian has been uh, provided a lot of uh, PCR filters to uh, our PCR uh, instruments customers, uh, including uh, a, a recent, uh, we, we've been working with the, a Canadian biotech uh, company, Spartan Biosciences. Uh, they make the, uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, fast uh, testing, uh, uh, devices, so they they use our iridium uh, uh, optical filters in in the in in the system. Uh, we uh, uh, basically we we have the uh, uh, more of, uh, uh, design uh, the uh, PCR filters, uh, especially for the uh, uh, the, uh, the high quality uh, PCR uh, testing equipments uh, uh, systems. Uh, for uh, with the LED uh, light source uh, in, in the system. Uh, so normally uh, a PCR instrument use uh, one, one set of excitation and emission uh, bandpass filters and also a, a dichroic filters uh, as a set uh, for multiple, multiple channels. Uh, so our emission, uh, our excitation and emission filters uh, has uh, uh, features uh, really high uh, transmissions uh, for the, the passband and uh, high uh, blocking range uh, outside the passband uh, and also very steep the edge. So we were talking about the edge steepness, uh, less than half percent from the 50% point uh, to the OD5 uh, blocking. Uh, so we we have the uh, both the, the excitation emission filters uh, for both for the common uh, for uh, fluorocom uh, channels uh, the, the five chan five channels common channels uh, in the table let's stay here. Uh, so our, our filters basically uh, we we have a very steep uh, edge filters for the excitation and emission filters that uh, allow uh, the the PCR system uh, to prevent the uh, the cross uh, talking between the uh, adjacent channels. So that's for example the this the uh, the, uh, the fam and the hex uh, channels they are very close to each other in in wavelength. So it, it's it's, it's, it's uh, important to uh, prevent the, uh, the, uh, the overlap the, between the, uh, uh, the, the, the signals. Uh, so also our dichroic filter also have a very steep edge, uh, uh, less than 1%, uh, the steep uh, edge steepness. Uh, and also uh, a high transmission and pass band and uh, high refraction on the uh, refraction band. Uh, again, uh, we have uh, also the common uh, channels, uh, uh, dichroic filters. So I will be happy to answer questions. 
Thank you very much, Iridian. I would like to remind everyone www.iridian.ca. You have a look there at all the different products when it comes to optical filters. I said high quality, reliability, and competitive pricing. We are really happy to have you in Epic. It is your first ever Epic presentation, so but you already expect what is coming. The Epic question. What can 650 members do for Iridian, and what can you do for them? I think we have a bit of a delay between here and Canada. Hong Bai? Yeah. So, the, uh, uh, yeah, we can, uh, we can basically just, uh, we can provide uh, uh, all different uh, solutions uh, for, for filters for all your uh, different applications, like uh, just like a mid midway IR. Uh, so uh, uh, we, we can also make the midway IR filters for for the uh, for that the application like a gas sensor that uh, 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 mid IR mid IR sensor lasers uh, uh, the uh, you, you just presented uh, uh, a few minutes ago. I would like to ask you about that the, your dichroic uh, filters. So one thing that is very, very impressive is your, your edge steepness. You go, uh, it's, it's a very, very sharp filter. Uh, you talk about 10% to 90% in less than 1%. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually share the slides so it's uh -huh. clear for everyone. Uh, what is, in your opinion, the, the killer application that requires this edge steepness? Wow, so... Uh... Other than this uh, PCR uh, biomedical uh, application, there's, there's also other application like in the uh, spectroscopy uh, that also the spectroscopy uh, uh, instruments like a, a spectrometer, uh, they, they also use uh, some kind of uh, dichroic filters uh, for, uh, and uh, also the, uh, we call the long edge pass filters. So to separate, uh, Basically, that the instruments uh, use uh, a laser uh, to uh, to uh, to create the uh, scattered uh, uh, signals for this for the sample uh, tested. Uh, so they need uh, basically need a very sharp the edge filter to uh, uh, to block the, the laser wavelength while uh, transmitting the uh, uh, the scattered the Raman signals. Let's talk now for a second about the PCR testing market segment. Of course, it was a fantastic 2020 for that, part that, for, for that segment, bad and painful as it was for the rest of the world. Um, what a kind of volumes did you see increasing? And was it, uh, was it as buoyant as we think from this side? Was the, anybody looking for this kind of filters for, for PCR? Yeah, so I, I, we, we, we have been uh, manufacturing the, in, in volume for this uh, kind of PCR filters, like uh, we, we are talking about the thousand filters uh, per, per month. Uh, so especially now the, uh, uh, the pandemic, uh, 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 the, the, the critical the, uh, time, timeline now. Uh, so a lot of uh, companies are developing also the, the fast testing, uh, uh, PCR uh, testing uh, uh, devices. Uh, so they, they, they need uh, also uh, uh, the the filters to uh, in the instruments uh, the device, and also uh, I think that they also uh, people uh, company are looking uh, to develop uh, also the uh, the home based uh, testing uh, uh, devices that uh, can people can just uh, use that uh, PCR uh, <laughs> device uh, to to test uh, at home. For, for the COVID-19. As, as, as I said before, when you are looking for very customizable optical filters that are stable and that they can actually be deployed from small to large optics, Iridian is a partner of choice. Thank you very much, Hong Bai Lao, and thank you, everyone. All of you already know that we announced the Q1 2021 online technology meetings. Any topic that you see interesting for you, please sign up. And tomorrow we have a meeting on high power and ultra fast lasers and data applications. Whenever you see an interesting meeting for you, sign up. And I would like also to let you know that at Epic, we continue bringing the different companies together from Epic, from Northwike, 
thank you very much for keeping supporting the industry. If you want to get in touch with any of the participants today, all you have to do is send me an email, jose.pozo at epic-asoc.com. And I will be more than happy to make the introduction because it's all about doing business. Stay tuned, stay healthy. Until the next time, be epic. Bye-bye.